This is Michael from Nomadic Insights. One of the topics that I have recently been researching and now that I'm in a relationship again is the subject of how to approach financial conversations. And I really have noticed a lack of information on this topic. So I just wanted to take a minute to talk about some of my thoughts of how financial combination or mergers work for non-married couples. I put together a little bit of a mental model that I'm hoping you guys might find some use for it. Please let me know your thoughts. So let's get into it. So a lot of couples are not married today. We know that this is the major cultural shift that has happened since the sexual revolution in the 1960s. This means marriage is going away and more couples are living together. They're not married, which leads to the need for you know, different forms of financial arrangement. So one of the problems that you run into is Financial advice is usually given in married couples versus then whatever. So if you're looking at products like, you know, joint checking accounts, you know, joint checking accounts don't really work for, you know, non-married couples who don't necessarily want to let their partner have full control over their paycheck or there's something like that. And they don't even really work for married couples. So it's a one size fits all solution, which is stupid. Uh, one size fits all doesn't work. And, you know, there may be a certain solution works for 90% of cases, but otherwise you have special solutions. And, you know, there doesn't really seem to be a comprehensive framework or, you know, phases of talking about different financial products and how to merge these things. So I would say that, you know, most conversations move on a continuum. So when you're trying to talk about financial conversations or you're trying to combine things, you know, there's different phases of, you know, here's intensity, here's combination, and here's how this works. So for me, I would say, like, if you're going to be, you know, living together, that's a pretty big merger, you know, merging like, you know, rent payments, phone bills, and all these other things. And you know, there doesn't really seem to be a framework in place or just a model in general for how to approach these, you know, mergers. So to me, I would say you want to try to have financial conversations. So phase one is really having, you know, money dates, or as I like to call them, you know, money Mondays where you have financial conversations as a couple. And inevitably, if you're living with somebody, you know, it does become a business. You know, you have children, you have joint financial decisions, you know, retirement, shared financial goals, buying a property. You know, I mean, this is a business partnership and you do need to understand what, you know, that partnership is going to accomplish. So, you know, having those open conversations and those open dialogues in a non-judgmental way, views on debts, you know, having a budget, you know, having these plans early and actually making a date out of it, get some pizza, have some fun, and, you know, just kind of spitball like, okay, if we wanted to go on vacation to Bali, to the Mount Eves, you know, what would this cost? You know, so that's what I would really call phase one is building these conversations in together probably not happening for most people in the early phases of a relationship. This is probably six months in for the majority of people, uh, largely because, you know, if you don't want to reveal your finances, but I mean, just be transparent anyway. I mean, but, you know, people got trust issues to begin with of like, ah, oh, I just want to run around. It's like, this is a good way to sort the wheat from the chaff or to get through the BS for lack of a better term here in phase one. So as we're looking at phase one, you know, I'd really say that phase two, Two, I really debate whether or not this should be a five-phase approach, but you know, I have to view it as three phases. You know, first you have joint financial conversations about a shared future or work on setting a joint budget where you know you're set aside money for like let's say vacations, not in a joint account, not anything joined, but still completely separated out. Then after you've done that for a period, say 90 days or a fiscal quarter, you know, you revisit it, and then you can change things around and have different conversations, maybe potentially combine things. If you want to save on your phone, combine a phone bill, fairly low risk, you know, nothing really changing, you know, you're not really, you know, changing very much. Um, you know, in that case, I would say that, you know, like living together would probably be like phase three, living together, then after living together, you know, opening up some sort of joint account, holding assets in common, owning things together. Um, you know, probably better prep than having a kid together. You don't want a kid together to be your first, uh, your first rodeo. If you can't even manage a checking account together, you probably shouldn't have children together. You know, it seems like a good policy to me. Uh, but with that in mind, you know, you're moving on to the next step and you're really following different stages of how to combine your financial future. 
And I would really say in like phase five mergers, you know, you're starting to do things like that are more permanent, like your car insurance together, your, you know, health, putting your significant other on your health insurance and things like that. And you're really getting into more of a combination or really just a roadmap for your future and actually building things in common. And, you know, one of the things is that with, you know, the five steps, you know, these baby steps or the Dave Ramsey five steps, you know, um, you know, I got five steps too. And I got five steps of, you know, merging your finances together and having joint conversations and building a successful future. Because I think that with relationships and having conversations about relationships, you know, it just starts with radical transparency. I mean, if it blows up in my face, you know, guess what? It's going to blow up in my face and that's okay with me. But, you know, when you have phases one through five, that is my simple, you know, strategy. I don't think it's particularly you know, crazy or out there. It's just, you know, you like somebody, you want to, you know, be with them. You want to have some conversations. Well, I'll be working on some resources, you know, kind of going back to the whole topic of, you know, kinky investing 101 or, you know, even being vanilla investing, you know, I'd say it's really kinky to actually, um, you know, have a conversation and we're going to tie somebody up, you know, got to have a friggin' transparent conversation about that. You know, you got to be a little open about that. There's a high level of trust involved. And I think that with most couples, you know, with most people, you know, having transparent conversations is important. But, you know, if you're dealing with crazy, you don't look crazy, okay? I mean, this ain't going to work with crazy people. Um... But, you know, most people should be able to have a rational conversation. You know, there's nothing offensive here. You know, if you're just talking about, you know, how are you going to divide things? You know, sending a joint budget together, doing envelopes, you know, putting the cash in your little envelopes together. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Nomadic Insights will be working on more um, smart contract related products, um, you know, with DeFi to actually, you know, make some of these tools. Because I see a real gap in the market that just like, um, you know, women's pants with pockets in them. It's one of my other products I'm working on. We're the silent speaker tool. I got a whole list of stupid ideas if anybody wants to, you know, work on these. But, you know, let me know what you guys think of, you know, how do we combine finances? How do we have joint conversations? And how do we do this? And what do we do in order to make this work as a cohesive unit or together? So, I mean... Even if you're poly involved in polyamory, you know, you're gay, lesbian, bisexual, I mean, you still got to deal with money. And, you know, I think that a lot of these ministries, you know, are very sectarian and very judgmental and it's one size fits all, which I just don't think works. Um, and that's just me. I mean, I do subscribe to, you know, budgets. I'm going to be likely going, I'm not going completely debt free. I just believe in responsible debt management so we'll see how that goes and i hope that you guys enjoy this content um i will be going through some of my you know adventures in couponing here as a man who coupons so apparently what i do now is uh you know credit cards and coupons but you know this is a topic that's just of interest to me where it's like you know having you know relationship you know how do you do this you know how do you merge this and how do you have this conversation and you know how do you do it in a way that derives some value um, and I don't think it's really, um, I don't think it's really shocking here, but it's just, how do you do this? You know, how do you merge your finances? How do you, and there's like, Venmo ain't going to solve the trick. Um, and I've been doing more research on this and I just find a woeful deficiency because I'm like, I think marriage is outmoded and kind of archaic. Um, you know, I want my solution, not somebody else's. And I think that that's ma that, that matters. So again, you know, we're going to be working on the ultimate guide to combining finances, you know, looking at phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and phase five. And, you know, hopefully that'll derive some value for you guys. Um, please let me know what you think and hope to see you again here on Nomadic Insights.